Hi there, I'm Dr Chris Moore and I'm the Programme Lead for the Undergraduate Degree in Biomedical Science at UE Bristol and today's uh, quick tips is going to be about how do you do what you do? So what I mean by how do you do what you do is Sometimes there are standard ways of doing things. Sometimes there are consistent ways of doing things. Sometimes there are ad hoc ways of doing things. And sometimes we don't really know how to go about doing things. Many people have their own ways of doing things that actually apply to a lot of other people or that involve a lot of other people. And there are some traditional things that we still do very traditionally. But maybe it's time to change that up a little bit. Now, in some ways, there is no right or wrong way of doing things. But occasionally, there are ways of doing things that the intent is there, but it's being executed maybe not the best way. And so I thought it might be useful to go through some tips and tricks on some of these key areas. Particularly if you are in a position of leadership, management, something that's setting the example, setting the standard, and the expectation for people to follow. It can often help people who you are responsible for and have responsibilities slightly different to maybe what yours are, if they're all able to work in the best way possible to get the work done to the highest standard by the example being set by you. Equally, from an academic perspective, doing things in a way that students are able to engage with more easily and more authentically compared to how hopefully things will be when they go out into the working world, this can help them achieve the best as well. Now these are in no particular order, but first up is organization. And I don't mean the organization that you're a part of, I mean the way that you organize yourself. Sometimes you have members of staff who have somebody else manage their calendars. Sometimes you have members of staff who have someone who sends emails on their behalf, which has always struck me as a slightly strange thing because if they wrote the email themselves, they're simply taking time to ask somebody else to type something into the to box to send it. That kind of seems like the same amount of time it would take for them to type in the distribution list themselves. But there are certain ways that we stick to doing things. Sometimes, however, it's about using files and how you organize your life. And a lot of this is going to come from a digital perspective because we now have digital capabilities and functionality and platforms and tools to help us do our jobs. If we embrace them, they can be so much more efficient and our jobs can be so much more enjoyable because we get to focus on the stuff we love not on the bureaucracy and the admin that sits behind it all. And so if you start to organize your work life or organize your files by using the appropriate tools, for us at UE, it is OneDrive for Business. Now, if we work in those cloud versions, if we share files appropriately, and if we store things in OneDrive rather than on flash drives, hard drives, H drives, as well as OneDrive or any personal drives like Dropbox or Google Drive, then we're able to work in a more consistent fashion so that we can get to them and that we can share them. This then comes on to sharing. Sharing files, sharing work, sharing thoughts. There are lots of platforms we can use for this. Uh, Microsoft Teams is a fantastic collaborative conversational community platform that in some places isn't being used quite right. But when it comes to sharing files, we're still in a bit of a habit of emailing a copy of a file that we have attached as a physical document to an email to multiple people for them to work on. But that just means that we're having copies of things sent back. We sometimes send questions to people in an email so that we then expect them to reply or, God help us, reply all to send the responses back when really we should be sharing Qualtrics forms, Microsoft forms, ways of collecting information from multiple people in one place that is live and is live updated and therefore we can access it. That way we can then share the results with multiple people. We can share files by working in sensible folder structures so that we don't have to send copies of anything to anybody or put things in the body of an email. It's a really important part of collaborative working and efficiencies. Now when we talk about collaboration, that can come in many forms. That can come working with one person, working on a project, working on a project within a team, or working with multiple teams, or it can come from meetings. Collaborative work can be done very efficiently in something like Microsoft Teams. And when you are working on a project, 
sometimes people aren't using Teams for what it's intended to be. Some people get confused by thinking that Microsoft Teams is a different version of OneDrive or SharePoint. Microsoft Teams actually sits on SharePoint. SharePoint is the backbone of it. And I have seen some horrendous examples of people creating channels within a team and a generic team at that. And the sole purpose of that channel is not for the conversation, not for the ongoing work, but to house a series of folders and a series of files within those folders in the files tab of that team. That is not what it is for. That is not an efficient way of working. And maybe it's not the best way to go about doing a project. If you haven't set up a project, set the expectation for there to be ongoing conversations and genuine collaborative work continuously, you should think about using either SharePoint, if it is a department or a larger team framework, or indeed sharing individual files from your OneDrive with the relevant people so that they can all access them and work on things together. The other thing with collaboration is creating a team solely for doing meetings. Now, meetings is another example of are we doing them the best way? Now, when it comes to in-person meetings, the tradition is that all the relevant people gather in a room, you have an agenda, you get told some information, there might be some discussion, there may be some questions that you can ask. But not everybody contributes or engages, and this can feel a little bit like a badly attended class. So when it comes to meetings, particularly with new digital capability and functionality, we really need to think about do meetings, now that they can exist virtually, and now that we can do collaborative working in the background, do they need to be fixed time points? You would be amazed the amount of time that we waste in meetings going over the minutes from the previous meeting. Now those minutes will have been sent electronically to the members of the team. If that's the case, it should have been sent as a live editable file because that way people can either make changes to the minutes to correct them, or they can digitally sign them off, or they can make comments if you do it in something like PDF or Word so that we can track those changes and we don't have to waste 10 minutes going through pages of minutes and people pretending they've read them. If someone has read the minutes, they can comment on them beforehand and we can crack them with the meeting. The next thing about meetings, unfortunately, is it's a lot of just telling people stuff. We don't need that anymore. If you're having a meeting and the pure purpose of it is to update people on things, just do a recording. If you want to actually work on something and get input from people, that's when we should be having a meeting. But equally, we shouldn't be doing meetings where work stops and starts. It's always going, be going on in the background, but we shouldn't need to update people as to where things are on a project because we should be file sharing, working collaboratively, creating a project team within Microsoft Teams that exists as almost a task and finish group for that project so that people can be assigned tasks. We can keep up to date with things so that we don't waste time sitting in silence as passive observers of an FYI. And unfortunately, a lot of meetings are still like that. We can be a lot more efficient and getting a lot more done if we work more digitally and we get more asynchronous with things. Management things, projects, teaching, marking, whether we're going to work synchronously or asynchronously, we need to start thinking about what is the best way to mark on a collaborative assessment. If you're assessing something, you're doing an exam, traditionally, with a paper-based exam, one person would get all the papers and work through their questions and pass them on to the next person. But that means that next person is sitting around waiting for those papers to arrive. I'm sure they've got plenty to be getting on with in other things, but it does mean that they're waiting to get marking done. Now, if we do things digitally equally, you could be waiting for someone to finish annotating the documents and then send them to you or put them back up into the shared folder. But if we all work live on documents, we can work on them in real time and we can work on them at the same time as one another. And that can speed up the process. And it's the same thing with projects, the same thing with agendas. We can all comment on things asynchronously so that when we come together, we can actually get the discussion stuff done, the fun part. I really don't see a point in a meeting that's just FYI. I really don't see the point in attending a meeting if you're not going to be an active participant in it and be part of either solving the problem or enhancing the practice. So it's important that we get these areas right. It's important that we think about how we do what we do. And it's also important that we consider pushing back when we see that things aren't being done the most efficient way for the highest quality output just because there are some people resistant to doing things different to that which we've already known. But then that comes to sharing best practice. If you find a new way of doing something, 
share it with other people. If it makes their lives easier, they really should welcome it. And hopefully that's where the enjoyment of the core part of the job comes from. I hope you found that useful. See you again next time.